Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K. And today we discuss about the fetal circulation. So it's a very simple topic if you listen closely. So the term fetal circulation, it can be split up into fetus and the circulation. So what is a fetus and what is a newborn? That's a question that will come in your mind first. So the fetus is nothing but the baby which is located within the uterus and connected to the mother through the placenta and umbilical cord. While the newborn is out of the womb or uterus and this connection that is the umbilical cord will be detached. And the circulation, the term circulation refers to the material transfer that is happening through the circulatory system and that is how the tissues receive nutrition and other materials for the development while at the same time the removal of the metabolic waste also happens through the circulatory. So the fetal circulation is through which the fetus receives whole necessary nutrition while it is inside the womb or uterus and the fetus is always dependent on the mother for the same. And how this exchange is happening? That is through the placenta and the umbilical cord. So here we have a very minimal depiction of the fetal circulation. So to your easy understanding purpose, I have cut short all the points so that you can conclude the fetal circulation into this small chart and you can elaborate it further. So here from the placenta, the exchange of the materials happen and that oxygenated nutrient rich blood will be carried through the umbilical vein into the fetus heart and from there it will be undergoing the systemic circulation and the deoxygenated blood will be coming through the umbilical arteries and finally reaching the placenta. So this happens as a cycle and that is how the fetal circulation is happening. Here we can see a depiction of the placenta. So this is the placenta which is attached to the uterine wall and you can see an orange colored area here. That is a space, a potential space in which the maternal blood will be pooled. The maternal blood means the mother's blood that will be pooled within the space while there are certain projections which are lying inside this villus, in their villus spaces and that is termed as the chorionic villi. So the chorionic villi will be inside the inter villus spaces where the maternal blood is pooled and that is where the exchange of all the materials happen. So this is the exchange point. So the placenta is having a maternal part here and a fetal part here and it is connected to the umbilical cord and the umbilical cord will be connected to the umbilicus of fetus and from there we will continue the circulation. So the placenta once again try to remember the intervillous spaces the orange colored area where the maternal blood is pooled then the chorionic villi which are present in the space and they are responsible for the exchange of gases and the nutrition and the exchange of waste products or the metabolic waste from the fetal blood. And here you can see the umbilical cord which connects between the umbilicus of the fetus and the placenta. So the umbilical cord is consisting of two umbilical arteries and a single umbilical vein. So this will take part in the exchange of the materials. So the oxygenated blood and nutri nutrient rich blood that is coming from the placenta will be carried through the umbilical vein while the deoxygenated blood from the systemic circulation is carried through the fetal arteries or the, the umbilical arteries to the placenta. So umbilical cord is consisting of two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein. Then after reaching the umbilicus 
the umbilical vein vein will continue upwards and that will be joining giving off a part to the liver and most of the oxygenated blood coming through the umbilical vein bypasses the liver and it is directly connected to the inferior vena cava through a bypass system called as ductus venosus so the ductus venosus bypasses most of the blood coming through the umbilical vein directly into the inferior vena cava from there it will be carried to the right atrium so the ductus venosus the umbilical vein is a part that supplies to the liver and the majority of the umbilical vein contents is bypassed into the inferior vena cava through the ductus venosus and here you can see the fetal heart where the blood from the inferior vena cava gets pulled up in the right atrium and the right atrium usually pumps the blood into the right ventricle but in case of fetal circulation there exists another bypass route which connects between the right atrium and the left atrium and that connection or the bypass is termed as the foramen ovale or foramen ovale so through which the blood that is pooled within the right atrium is pushed into the left atrium and from there into the left ventricle and from the left ventricle to the aorta as usual so the same thing is represented here the blood reaches the right atrium the shunt between the right and left atrium through the foramen ovale or ovale and then the left atrium to the left ventricle and to the aorta and as we have told before a part of the blood that is pooled here in the right atrium will be pushed into the right ventricle as well not only to the left atrium a part of the blood from here passes to the right ventricle as well and from the right ventricle as it contracts it will be pushed into the pulmonary arteries and what are the function of pulmonary arteries it carries blood to the lungs and in case of a fetus both the lungs are non functional so it doesn't require that much of blood and there will be reverse pressure so that there is another bypass existing in the fetal circulation which connects between the pulmonary artery and the aorta so that connection is termed as the ductus arteriosus so the ductus arteriosus carries the majority of blood that is pumped into the pulmonary artery to the aorta and it is carried to the systemic circulation so this is the three differences when it comes to the fetal circulation so the first bypass was the ductus venosus which bypass the liver then there is foramen ovale which bypasses the right atrium directly connected to the left atrium then the third one that is ductus arteriosus where there is a connection between the pulmonary artery and the aorta and uh, after that this pulmonary artery will just push maximum of blood into the aorta so here we have the depiction a part of blood from the right atrium enters right ventricle then to the pulmonary artery since the lungs are non functional it bypasses into the aorta through the ductus arteriosus and here after the systemic circulation what will happen the blood will be coming to the common iliac arteries and from there there are two umbilical arteries formed here that will carry the blood through the umbilical cord back to the placenta so the systemic circulation finally reaches the umbilical arteries and that is connected to the placenta through the umbilical cord as we have seen previously and let's come to the changes that happens after the birth so we have discussed about a particular shunt mechanism or uh, the bypass systems so there was ductus venosus 
there was foramen ovale there was ductus arteriosus there was umbilical vein and the umbilical arteries so all these structures will get obliterated soon after the birth they won't be having any functions so they will remain in the body as certain ligaments and structures so the umbilical vein will be converted or will get converted to the ligamentum teres while the ductus venosus will become non functional and it forms the ligamentum venosum while the foramen ovale that opening will be closed to form the fossa ovalis and the ductus arteriosus will converted get converted as the ligamentum arteriosum and the umbilical arteries will be forming into the medial umbilical ligaments so these are the changes which happens after birth in the fetal circulation so all these channels will be or bypasses will be blocked and the normal circulation begins soon after the birth so that concludes the fetal circulation and the changes after birth thank you